you, you touch upon a point about um, uh, social research or the, uh, so the social sciences. The so social science denialism that exists in the atheist community is um, quite worrying in a way because it's so ridiculously anti-scientific. It's so born out of their own um, bias and it becomes almost like their own little religion. They're a little anti-feminist religion where you can cite anything like the carbon, uh, carbon fiber masculinity one that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, or where um, Sargon of Akkad um, does his whole um, his thing about Swedish rape culture and stuff. Um, it's this, the studies are there, and you can say, look, this is the, this is the thing. You know, this is X, Y, and Z is what this uh, study found, and they can just say, oh well, that's not one of the hard signs. Well, how could you prove in or not? You, well, in in sociology, or whatever, you can't necessarily absolutely prove it. But how can you go about trying to even understand a problem if all you're going to say is, well, you can't prove something conclusive? It, it's it, it you're holding it to an impossible standard again a, a kind of quasi uh, creationist attitude of saying well you if you can't prove god isn't there so therefore i can believe whatever the fuck i want no that's not how that works it's there, a, there's not how a, it should work yeah there is so much um like a lack of understanding of what the social how the social sciences i think even work within that community and if you don't mind i'm just going to briefly run through what i did for my doctoral thesis i really won't go on too long about it but um, as someone interested in gender politics and feminism and also in electoral behavior uh, i was looking at the surveys we were using in social science and for gender measures we have this measure of man woman it's a biological measure and yet the more I thought about it, it came to me that like, well, we're measuring biology, but where's the causal mechanism? How do we get from XY and XX to suddenly someone being more on a left scale than um, on the right on the political scale? Where is the causal mechanism for that? And that's when I started to see, well, we really need to disambiguate these social things like individual gender identity and also social norms on the, on the aggregate level. And so I took measures from psychology that measured an individual's um, agency in their communion. And these norms are highly tied to masculinity and femininity. So independence, competitiveness is agency and connectedness with others and uh, feeling kind toward others is, com is communion, which is associated with like femininity and the sort of patriarchal kind of norms of what men and women are supposed to be. So when you add, when I, I then got funding to conduct a study where we did uh, an instrument, we uh, did a survey instrument using almost 3,000 British respondents on the YouGov panel. And I took measures from a traditional political science survey and included measures of these gendered measures and male and female. And then when I got the data back, I ran the inferential statistics. I used um, ordinary least squares and logistic regression to measure the coefficients for the effect of being a man or a woman compared to the effect of having a high or a low sense of agency. And what I found is that more often than not, when you controlled for how agentic a person felt or communal they were, that sex no longer had a statistically significant effect which implies that we've always been measuring sort of gender wrong. We've been calling it sex differences, but it's actually much bigger than that. And we need a better instrument. We need a more refined instrument if we really want to understand the sources of these differences where they exist and understand their causal mechanisms. So tell me how that's not science. Um, I, I think uh, you're just vague hand waving in the same thing. So <laughs> that, that basically explains it perfectly well, doesn't it? What, what more could you possibly need? <laughs> Logic, motherfuckers. That's all you've got to say. Science for the win. Just say science for the win. And, you know, uh, whatever. And Wait, that's <laughs> my line. That's my line. <laughs> well, oh, sorry. Science be praised. Yeah. The, the, this, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the, the anti-science attitude from people who are so supposedly pro-science because... Either they don't understand it or they don't want, in some cases, they don't want to understand it. They're not going to try to understand it. That's, that's worrying because um, I think as we were uh, discussing beforehand, it's, it's understandable that certain people, um, or certain people within uh, a normal, usual religious framework, um, keep hold of that kind of pig-headedness, if that makes sense, um, because you're... Uh, you're um, you're, you're taught within that uh, sort of strict framework of patriarchy. There are, there are certain set gender roles. Um, and some people find that still comforting, but they've just removed God from the situation. You know, um, 
yeah, that's that's uh, that's basically the point I was going to make. <laughs>